Uh, commentary tonight of England Brazil, seven o'clock kickoff. Uh, Adrian Durham will be your host, uh, Jim Proudfoot, and Stuart Pierce will be your commentary team. And uh, Stuart joins us now. How are you, pal? Oh, I'm on good form, thank you very much. Oh, that's good to know. Excellent Stuart. news. That's now, good now to bit, know. Of, bit, a bit of work for you to do, Stuart, before we talk about the game, if if that's okay. Um, yep. We're we're building. Uh, the Inga Lund chant, which you would, of course, heard as you were parading yeah. uh, down the left hand, the left flank for England in the glory days. Um, using WhatsApp voice notes, uh, we haven't worked out if it's good radio yet. And we're, we're not asking you to judge that, just to go please, along please with it. Please don't judge that. Don't, don't judge it. But, but here's how the fans and listeners have... This is the chant so far. OK, have a listen. England, 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 England. Right, so that's where we're at, Stuart, <laughs> and we're going to play you three or four options for the next line. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. And we, okay. We know your music sounds musically, musically very, very knowledgeable. Music, yeah, musical, Stuart, yeah, you're a musical it. guy. So, you you've know. never sounded more excited about so anything. What we're looking for is England, England, same again, isn't it? But yeah, really same again. Drive so, it in towards the end of the song. Yeah, you really have. Okay, so here's take one, Stuart. England. No, 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 take two. England. No, that's the end. Completely wrong. Take three. No, that's wrong oh, again. No, we're in trouble. Well. What we got any more? Why are you even playing more? these out? England. That, right, none what of them. What was that, a robot? It's embarrassing. That wow. was in front of Stuart Pierce. Uh, that, that was, was in, in front, front of Stuart, of Stuart, Stuart. I feel, I feel dirty. Psycho dirty. Pierce. I feel, I feel ashamed. I'd like to apologise. Stuart, if you want to abstain, you can. Hang your head in shame. Yes, that exactly. was what I thought, honestly. And that is Stuart Pierce speaking. Yeah. <laughs> what we need from people is this. England. England. So yeah. we need oh, England. It's not hard, people. It's not hard. We're doing this. We've been flogging this for two hours and ten minutes, for goodness sake. Oh three seven one seven. It is an international break. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Anyway, to the game. England, Stuart. Brazil. Um, yeah, um, how excited are you about it? Well, I think it's a brilliant fixture in our calendar. It always has been, to be honest with you. And I think Gareth's got an opportunity. Um, from his point of view, certainly this one and, and Belgium, to, to have a look at one or two players that probably might be grey areas to be in the squad, let's say, you know, and they've got a stake of claim. So uh, they're always good fixtures, England, Brazil, even if there's players missing from, from varying teams, I think. Yeah, he, one of those players might be uh, Kobe Mainu, mightn't it? You know, he's eight, I mean, he's only 18. He's only, yeah. I think he's played six first team games for Man United. But he's been so impressive. He's in a position where, where we, I think we need him. I think we have a, that's one of our holes in the team. You know, do you yeah. think he could make the plane, Stuart? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. I think he's played well enough. Every time I've seen him play for United this season, he's played way above his years. I've got to say, he's composed in position of the ball. People trust him with the ball. And I think he's played very well. I've not seen him have a bad game or even a game where I thought, you know, there's a youngster there who's got a little bit nervous, you know, stepping into United's first team. Mm. I mean, he's been very impressive, I've got to say. And to be fair, you know, with Gareth, if he thinks they're good enough and he needs them in certain positions, he'll take them with him. No doubt about that. 18, making your debut uh, for England v Brazil. I mean, where did it all go right, isn't it? Is that really... Amazing. Well, I think that's the beauty of professional football nowadays. I think many years ago, you probably had to play a few seasons to, to get the opportunity to break into an international side. Nowadays, if you're in the first team at Manchester City or wherever or wherever or Man United, and you, you, the England manager will be there and he'll put you in the squad. And that's yeah. the beauty of it. You've played Brazil three times. I was going to say, Stuart, I played, think. is that yeah, right? Yeah. No, more than that. Five, I think. More? Oh, five yeah. times. Five times. Brazil and Poland uh, are the ones I've played the most uh, in okay. my career. So. What's it like when, you know, when you're just lining up, obviously, you know, well, lots of talk about the England kit, but like, it's a great kit, but the Brazil kit is an amazing kit. When you're sitting there, when you're standing there before kickoff and you're just looking at 11 Brazilians, what, what are you thinking? Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, they haven't got a guest coin in their team. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, to be fair, they, they, listen, Brazil is a daunting task. I was fortunate enough, my first game was against Brazil, 100,000. And I'm walking out of Wembley thinking, you know what? I used to be an electrician three and a half years ago, yeah. you know? 
uh, in this borough. So it, it's quite daunting. But the, the beauty is, if you're going to start an international career and Maynu uh, might get the opportunity today at senior level, what a brilliant... If you take on the Brazilians and you get on, it doesn't phase you. There's nothing else in world football that would worry you. Mm. Um, it's, it's sort of, is it a straight shootout between Ollie Watkins and Ivan Tony over these two games? We presume Kane won't play at all. Uh, well, listen, if Harry doesn't play, and you know what Harry Kane can do, so I, I don't think there's any mileage in, in sort of him playing in these games either way. But mm-hmm. those two, you would say yes, unless he wants to take both of them as options. I don't. I always felt whenever I pick squads, you're better off mix and matching at the back potentially. You always know you can put you know Walker in at centre half or right back that type of thing. But you need your attacking options. People who can get your goals are worth their weight in gold in, in squad situations. Yeah, I think no, I, I think you're right. And, and look, left back is a concern yeah. at the moment, isn't it? And yeah. I mean, Chilwell's form has been uh, not amazing. But Chelsea, Luke Shaw isn't fit. Like Joe Gomez has done a good job there for Liverpool, but it'll make such yes. a difference if we don't have a natural left-sided player there, won't it? I think Gareth, in all honesty, he'll have his fingers crossed that Luke Shaw will be recovered and fit for the summer. Because it, for me, we've had a look at varying what left backs, but Luke Shaw is the standout left back, you know, and, and I think he'll be missed if he, he's not involved. We've been fortunate enough over previous tournaments that he's always been available for them, injured during the season for occasion, but he's managed to make the major tournaments, and I hope that's the case this time. Uh, yeah, I mean, Trippi has done... Sorry, sorry yeah, Charlie. Tri- Trippi has sort of done that job. But would you look at it and say, look, we have to... You have to have a left-footed player there. Like, almost go down a, a quality level and take a left-footed left-back. If Let's say Shaw isn't fit and, and, you know, maybe Chilwell isn't either. I don't know. Would you go, OK, I mean, I'm trying to think one. I'm trying to pick yeah. one and don't yell at me. I'm just saying Aaron Cresswell is left-footed, right? I don't know. I'm just thinking of a left... There might yeah. be a million more I haven't thought of, but would you go down a level to have a left-footer there? In all honesty, if you'd have asked me the question two years ago, I would have said it's not that important. But the more I look at it, the more the answer to your question is 100%. You need a natural left footer that doesn't want to check out on his right foot. Otherwise, you just go up blind alleys a little bit, you know, uh, attacking-wise. So I think, yes, the answer, a natural left footer, without a doubt, even if you've got a drop-down in quality. Mm, That's really interesting, yeah. That's really very oh, interested in that. And totally, yeah. oh, Do we think Cole Palmer and... could play on the left? I, f- I fancy Cole Palmer on the left, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm assuming because uh, he plays on the right for Chelsea, we will only be yeah. thought of there. I I think he's cute enough to play anywhere. To be honest with you, I personally think it's Phil Foden's best position though yeah. on the left hand side. So the the beauty of it is, I think with with Cole Palmer staking a, a really strong claim this year got so many good options and we haven't even talked about Jack Grealish at the moment either but there's another option so there's a lot of left-sided options but the the key for Gareth is making sure he gets the, the balance right within the team you know I mean whatever that looks like mm, there's something difficult isn't there about you know you'll say you're Anthony Gordon right you might get I don't know 60 minutes in these two games you might get more you might get less and and so, yeah. so much rests on that right because every the manager only has that time and training to decide yeah. if you're good enough to go. All the fans yeah. make up their mind on this one game. And you can have a great game and not be necessarily good enough. You can have a poor game and it doesn't define, shouldn't define you. But that's the sort of difficult position you're in. I mean, does, does that... I guess coping with that pressure is a huge part for these players, right? It, it is. It's a step up. I mean, international football is a step up psychologically. It's not just the ability factor because most of them that get picked in the squad, you know they've got the ability. They play in the Premier League. That's as strong a league as anywhere in the world. The key is, what's your mentality like when you step on the big stage against the best in the world and expectation goes through the roof? You're right in what you say. You can go in and you can play yourself out the next 10 mm. squads potentially with a real stinker and... and and a mentality where you look you look from the outside as a manager and think, I'm not sure he can handle this or handle the training or handle the occasion. Um, but the other other side of that is Cole Palmer come in for his first captain, looked every part of the international that could deal with what was in front of him. And I think that's why he's been elevated as quickly as he had. Uh, what was the last gig you went to, Stuart? I, I had a big week this week. Oh, a oh here we go. A monster Ready week. for it? Yeah, go on. 
Yeah, I'm ready. Monday night, the Who and Squeeze, oh, Albert Hall. Wow. Okay. Was that Teenage size. Cancer Trust, was it? That, that was the kickoff. That yeah, was yeah. the kickoff. Uh, Tuesday night, Nottingham, the Stranglers. Oof, again. How many times yeah, is that now? How many times, Stuart? <laughs> Are they bored of you now, Stuart? They're like, oh, not him again. They did look at me and say, ain't you got anything better to, to be fair to them? Uh, Are you sure the Stranglers night? aren't coming to see you, Stuart? <laughs> well, that would be nice, you know. If, if, if I, they if never I, uh, come round to your house, do they? To see you. You never know. I might book them for my 40th birthday. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I just might. Okay. I just might. Okay, so two, Tuesday, the Stranglers. Oh, yeah. Wednesday. The Stranglers. Wednesday, OMD. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Request all manoeuvres oh, in the dark. Nice. Lovely, yeah. It's it's solid. And I had a night off Thursday. And Friday, I went to see a Clash and Sex Pistols tribute band. Oh, last lovely. Night. Smashing. So good. Wow. Quiet week. Quiet week. Yeah, isn't it just... Poor old Thursday. It's like yeah, Europa League, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Go on, <laughs> find a gig on Thursday, Stuart. No, Thursday no, night. Thursday so night, so night so he watches yeah. Channel 5. Thursday night, he just sits home, <laughs> watches Channel 5. Hey, enjoy yeah, the game later, right. Stuart. Thanks for coming on. Will do, gents. Take Thanks, care. Stuart. Have a good weekend. Uh, Stuart Pearce there. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.